welcome to the second lesson in this series called Investigating Electromagnetic Radiation. In the previous lesson, we discovered that electromagnetic radiation has some wave properties and can be represented as two transverse waves which move perpendicular to each other. Here, the vertical component of the wave is a changing electric field and the horizontal component is a changing magnetic field. We also noted that electromagnetic radiation can be produced with a range of frequencies to form a spectrum of different electromagnetic waves. In this lesson, we will examine the electromagnetic spectrum in more detail and pay special attention to the spectrum formed by different colors of visible light. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Recall the spectrum of different colors of light that make up visible light, explain how we see objects of different color, and determine what happens when different colors of light are mixed together. All electromagnetic radiation can be divided into seven categories depending on the wavelength and frequency of the radiation. These seven categories make up the electromagnetic spectrum. We are going to examine the waves of the electromagnetic spectrum in decreasing order according to wavelength. In other words, from the longest waves to the shortest waves. We will also consider sources of these waves apart from the sun and stars and some of the ways in which we use them. First, there are radio waves. Radio waves have the longest wavelengths, but they have the lowest frequencies. Their wavelengths range between 1000 meters and 0,1 meters with frequencies between 10 to the 6 hertz and 10 to the 10 hertz. Radio waves are mainly produced by very distant star systems called quasars and neutron stars called pulsars. We can detect this type of long wave radiation using radio telescopes. Because the source of the radiation is so far away, the information we collect using these telescopes is actually very old, possibly even as old as the universe itself. At the moment, South Africa is making a bid to become the host of the Square Kilometre Array of Radio Telescopes, known as the SKA. The SKA will hopefully help astronomers and physicists to unravel some of the mysteries of how the universe was formed. In addition to these natural sources of radio waves, people produced radio waves using radio and television transmitters. We used radio waves to send radio and television signals all around the world. This technology has impacted all our lives and changed the way we communicate. Cellular phones are newer than radios and televisions, but also use radio waves to send and receive information. They are becoming essential communication tools for all people everywhere. Second in wavelength are microwaves. Microwaves have wavelengths between 15 centimeters and 0,1 centimeters with frequencies ranging from 10 to the 10 hertz and 10 to the 12 hertz. People are able to generate microwaves using electron tubes called klystrons. We use microwaves in satellite communication, microwave cooking, radar speed trapping guns and for radar air traffic control. Next, we have infrared waves. Infrared waves have wavelengths between 10 to the minus 3 meters and 10 to the minus 6 meters with frequencies between 10 to the 12 hertz and 10 to the 15 hertz. They are produced by any hot bodies such as humans, fires and the sun. The red spots on this infrared picture of a human show the parts of the body which are the hottest. We use infrared radiation to cook food in conventional ovens. But 
Infrared radiation does not only relate to high temperatures. Infrared waves are used in optical fibers for communication, and even your TV's remote control uses these waves. In addition, chemists and forensic scientists use infrared spectrometry to identify the characteristics of many molecules. Notice that as the wavelengths are getting shorter, so the frequencies are getting higher. Next, we have visible light. This region of the electromagnetic spectrum can be broken down into a range of different colors of light, from red to violet. The visible light spectrum has wavelengths ranging from 10 to the minus 6 meters for red light to 10 to the minus 7 meters for violet light. The frequencies range between 10 to the 15 hertz for red light and 10 to the 16 hertz for violet light. In addition to the sun, light is produced by light bulbs and lasers. Although all the other parts of the electromagnetic spectrum are important, this part is actually the most important for life on Earth. The most obvious consequence of light is that we can see the world around us. But the most important use of light takes place in plants. Plants absorb light energy from the sun in the presence of chlorophyll and use the light energy to produce food from carbon dioxide and water. Without this amazing and very complex process called photosynthesis, no life would be possible on Earth. The next section of the spectrum is ultraviolet radiation. This has wavelengths between 10 to the minus 7 meters and 10 to the minus 8 meters and frequencies between 10 to the 16 hertz and 10 to 17 hertz. There are three main types of UV radiation, UVA, UVB and UVC. The main source of this radiation is the sun. UVC is blocked out by ozone in the atmosphere, so we don't need to worry too much about it. UVB radiation is able to penetrate the epidermal layer of the skin and is the cause of sunburn. UVA radiation is able to penetrate right to the dermis of the skin, which can also cause skin damage and cancer. Ultraviolet radiation, sometimes called UV light, cannot be detected by our eyes, but can cause damage to them. So make sure you don't look at a UV light for too long without wearing eye protection. UV light can be quite useful too. It is used to pick up invisible markings like these on our banknotes and is also used by scientists to detect traces of blood and to analyze organic compounds. Next, we have X-rays. X-rays have wavelengths between 10 to the minus 8 meters and 10 to the minus 11 meters. Their frequencies range between 10 to the 17 hertz and 10 to the 21 hertz. Because X-rays have a very short wavelength, they are able to penetrate many things. They can be detected on photographic paper and are used to take pictures of the bones of the human body. They also have security applications, such as scanners at airports. Finally, there are gamma rays. Their wavelengths are between 10 to the minus 11 meters and 10 to the minus 15 meters. Their frequency range is from 10 to the 21 hertz to 10 to the 24 hertz. Gamma rays are produced by radioactive elements and are used to kill cancer cells, sterilize equipment and to increase the shelf life of food. Although the different regions of the spectrum are all very interesting, we will now only focus on the visible light spectrum. The sun produces white light, which is naturally split into a rainbow as it passes through tiny drops of water in the atmosphere after or during a rainstorm. A rainbow shows us that white light can be broken up into a range of different colors. We can break light up into the same range of colors by using a prism or a diffraction grating and a white light source. The visible spectrum consists of seven colors of light.
Each color has its own wavelength and frequency. In order of decreasing wavelength and increasing frequency, the colors of light are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Remember that the reason we see things when we look at the world around us is because light traveling from a source of light like the sun is reflected off the object we are looking at and then enters our eyes. We see different colors because different surfaces reflect different parts of the visible light spectrum. So we see this square as blue because blue light is reflected off its surface and enters our eyes. And we see this as red because red light is reflected off its surface. If no light is reflected off a surface, the object appears black. And if all the colors are reflected, the object appears white. Of course, we can see many different colors and not just those we have mentioned so far. Let's spend some time looking at how this is possible using lights of different color. Color mixing is used in theaters to change the atmosphere on the stage or to change how the stage looks. Let's go to a theater to see what happens when we mix certain colors of light together. In white light, the canvas appears white so we know that it reflects all the light shone on it. Can you predict what will happen when only red light is shone on the canvas? Watch and see. The canvas now appears red. Since only red light was shone on the canvas, only red light could be reflected and so the canvas appeared red. Now we are going to shine a blue light as well as a red light onto the canvas. The canvas now appears to be magenta a color which is a combination of the blue and red light. Let's take the red light away, so now there is only blue light shining. Now the canvas appears blue, which is exactly what we would have expected. Let's add a green light now. Once again we get a new color. The blue and green light make the color we call cyan. Now let's take away the blue light and leave the green. The canvas now appears green in color. If we now add red light to this green light, the canvas will now appear to be yellow. So yellow light is formed by mixing green and red light together. If we now shine red, blue and green lights onto the canvas all at the same time, the canvas once again appears white. Clearly when red blue and green light are combined, we get white light. These three colors are called primary colors of light. No combination of other colors can make any of the primary colors, but all other colors of light are some combination of the primary colors. Because of this, the only colors of light used to produce all the colored images on TV and computer screens are these three primary colors. A color chart like this can help us remember what happens when light of different colors mix. When primary colors mix together, they form a secondary color. So yellow, cyan and magenta are the secondary colors of light. Now if we take yellow light, a secondary color, and mix it with blue light, a primary color, what color do you think the light will be? Before we see for ourselves at the theater, let's think about it. Yellow light is actually a mixture of green and red light, as you have seen before. So we are actually mixing green, red and blue light together. Remember, these are the primary colors of light, so we should get white light when we mix them. Watch as we add blue light and yellow light together. The canvas now appears white, just as we expected. So, we can get white light by mixing just two colors of light. Any two colors of light which give us white light when they are mixed together are called complementary colors of light. So yellow and blue are complementary colors. 
complementary colors are always opposite each other on the color chart and together contain all three primary colors. There are two more sets of complementary colors. See if you can name them by looking at the color chart again. Well, from the color chart, I'm sure you can see that cyan and red are complementary and so are magenta and green. Notice in each pair of complementary colors, one is a primary and the other a secondary color of light. Here are two questions I want you to complete for your task. Firstly, watch what happens when I spin this color wheel. Write down your observations and explain them. Secondly, when a yellow object is placed in blue light, it appears black. But when it is placed in cyan light, it appears green. Use the color chart to explain these observations. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Goodbye and see you next time when we'll investigate how electromagnetic radiation interacts with matter. Yeah.